Greetings. It gives me great pleasure to uh, present to you some very brief findings in regards to uh, the 90 Days Most Current Study, uh, Study 3, a randomized control trial entitled, entitled Investigating the Effectiveness of an Entertainment Education Short Film for Internalized HIV Stigma Reduction, Intimate Partner HIV Status Disclosure Intentions, and Antiretroviral Medical Adherence, and, um, adherence Intentions. This study was conducted among um, Black women living with HIV in the South. Uh, particularly 130 Black women living with HIV in the southern U.S. Um, and the southern U.S. region was identified based on how the CDC identifies the southern U.S. region. Participants were recruited via Facebook as well as Qualtrics and the data collection was completed online. So um, while the study had three primary outcomes, the most important outcome that this research investigated was the ability for the 90 Days film to assist with HIV disclosure and increase HIV disclosure intentions for um, women who want to disclose uh, and assist them in being able to do so when they're ready. So while we do know that HIV status disclosure is important uh, for several reasons, primarily it can um, assist individuals in making the proper decisions in regards to protecting themselves. But on the other end, um, aside from just preventing transmission, it's very important for those who are living with HIV to be able to disclose when they're ready for multiple reasons. So um, for psychological well-being, for better medical, better medical adherence, and then uh, for the southern U.S. and across other areas within the U.S., um, non-disclosure is criminalized. So for several reasons, disclosure is um, important. So nonetheless, I'm excited to share that um, when this film was compared to the control condition, which consisted of a brochure that discussed HIV stigma, disclosure, how to disclose, um, in comparison to the control condition, the 90 days film uh, was more efficacious in increasing HIV status disclosure intentions, increasing disclosure beliefs, so increasing women's beliefs that they should disclose prior to sexual activity. Uh, the film also outperformed the standard of care uh, brochure significantly with increasing positive disclosure attitudes, so um, strengthening or improving the way women view disclosure, so uh, that was an interesting finding. It also, uh, the film was also more likely to be desired to be discussed with others. So um, in comparison to those who read the brochure, women who watched the film were more likely to report their intentions to discuss the 90 days film with their friends, family, loved ones, but most particularly with their sexual partner. Uh, women who were in the brochure condition were less likely to report that they wanted to talk about the brochure they read with others. Additionally, uh, the film was more efficacious in improving uh, women's self-efficacy for disclosing. Women who watched the film uh, reported significantly higher uh, confidence in their ability to disclose to their sexual partner. Additionally, uh, one of the last findings, but most important in regards to disclosure, is that the 90 Days film was viewed as a tool that could facilitate safe disclosure. And this was the first study to evaluate a tool that can be used for a safer disclosure. And so what I mean by safer disclosure is this, uh, the preceding study to this randomized control trial, which was a focus group, uh, found that women felt that they could watch the film with their partners and based upon their partner's responses, utilize the film as a proxy measure of safety. So if their partner uh, became angry or upset at Jessica for disclosing that she was HIV positive, then women felt that would be a signal to them that it's not safe to disclose. So building upon this, the randomized control trial, I developed a scale to actually assess whether or not this phenomenon was actually occurring. And indeed it is. The disclosure, Safer Disclosure Tool assess women's thoughts on whether or not they felt they could use the film to gauge the safety between them and their partner in regards to disclosure. And so in regards to women who were in the film condition or the 90 days condition, they reported higher levels of feeling that the film could be a tool for safety um, in comparison to those who viewed the brochure. Women who viewed the brochure were less likely 
to report that the brochure could be used as a measure to gauge the safety of a disclosure event. And so that is a very important finding when we think about intimate partner violence, especially upon disclosure. Uh, while uh, disclosure is highly advocated and there are so many great things that can come from it, it can also be very consequential in regards to uh, mental, emotional, and physical abuse, particularly among women. And so just to tie this all up, overall, uh, the film provided a social guide on how to disclose um, and how to enact such a complex behavior. Uh, across various forms of research, disclosure intervention research is very, very limited. Um, there isn't very much out there in regards to interventions that are effective that can improve and facilitate safe disclosures. And so that was a promising finding from this research. Additionally, the film can be considered a cost-effective intervention. Uh, most interventions that look at improving medical adherence or stigma or um, even some forms of disclosure use they oftentimes use um, small group motivational interviewing approaches, which are great. However, they're limited in their ability to reach a larger number of um, patients or population members who are in need. And so the 90 Days Film being a mass media tool is um, a cost effective opportunity to intervene in um, HIV disclosure. This is uh, very important as well, considering that this work was done in the Southern US. The Southern US is historically underfunded, about $100 per person living with HIV uh, in comparison to other regions and in comparison to the US state funding for HIV. And also the US Southern region is more likely to criminalize non-disclosure. However, the US Southern region and all across the US, there is very limited research. One study has been done to date, um, and now two because of the study that was just conducted with the 90 Days film, has been uh, investigating the use of uh, strategies for safe disclosure. And so finding that this is effective, especially among Black women in the Southern US, where there aren't a lot of interventions and are not a lot of resources to fund or facilitate these interventions, is a very rewarding finding from this work. Uh, the US Southern region has the highest incidence, prevalence, and mortality rates. And so finding a way to increase safe disclosure um, that can prevent subsequently transmissions to others, as well as improve the day-to-day -day life of individuals living with HIV, um, is very promising and rewarding. And so I think that will, um, I think that sums up the overall findings. I'd love to share more or further discuss different areas for research or intervention uh, for practice and clinical implications as well. Um, and so I'll just wrap it up with that. Thank you so much, Nathan and Richard for the opportunity to study this film. Uh, this is our third research study and I look forward to doing uh, many more on this impactful, um, effective uh, piece of work. So thank you all so much. And without further ado, I will conclude uh, this presentation. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you all soon.